Merry Christmas. The children have welcomed us so beautifully, and let me add my voice to theirs to say welcome to First Parish. We have been here for 325 years. Now, you know, we didn't hold Christmas Eve services way back then. That didn't start till a lot later. But now we are here, and I'm thrilled to see you all. My name's Ann Mason. I am the minister here, and I am delighted to be starting my second year here as the settled minister. Just want to say welcome, and may your holidays be joyous, and may this service be a time of quiet and of joy, of longing and of fulfillment. And as Elizabeth lights our chalice, which is the symbol of Unitarian Universalism, we light this chalice with the light of our faith in hope that this light will shed its light onto the world. For this world is a place that is in need of the light that we carry within us, the light that we honor in every child. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in singing our opening hymn printed in your order of service, O Come All Ye Faithful. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. It was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Please join me in singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed, amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which, they just, which were just as they had been told. Now please join me in singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom gathered for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And then the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did to me. Here ends the reading. Will you join us in singing and please rise as you are able and sing In the Bleak Midwinter.
It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of the little Russian village, for the short winter day was nearly over. Old Papa Panoff, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmases. Papa Panoff lived alone. His wife had died and his children had moved on. His usually cheerful face looked sad now, but he went back indoors with a firm step, made a pot of coffee, and settled in his big armchair. Papa did not often read, but tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible. He read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them at the inn so that Mary's little baby was born in a cow shed. Oh dear, oh dear, if only they could have come here. I would have given them my bed and covered the baby with my patchwork quilt so he would have been warm. He read on about the wise men, how they had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panoff grew sad. I have no gift to give Jesus. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, reached for a small dusty box, and opened it. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panoff smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he had remembered, the best shoes he had ever made. He was feeling tired now, and the more he read, the sleepier he became. In no time at all, Papa Panoff was fast asleep, and as he slept in his chair, he dreamed. He dreamed that someone was in his room, and he knew at once who that person was. It was Jesus. You have been wish wishing that you could see me, Papa Panov. Look for me tomorrow. It'll be Christmas Day and I will visit you. But look carefully, for you will not know who I am or what I look like. When at last Papa Panov awoke, the bells were ringing out and a thin light was filtering through the windows. Bless my soul, it's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched. Then he was filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he appear? Would he be a little baby as he was that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, a great king? He must watch carefully the whole day through so that he would know Jesus when he came. I will make some coffee and step outside to watch for baby Jesus. The street is deserted. No one is awake yet. Oh, there is someone. It's the street sweeper. And he looks as miserable and dirty as ever. Papa Panov opened the shop door, letting in a thin stream of cold air. Oh, come in, come in, and have some coffee to take away the warmth, take away the cold. The sweeper looked up, surprised. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. The hot mug of coffee warmed his hands as he drank. Papa Panov watched him with satisfaction. But every now and then, his eyes strayed to the window. He did not want to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? So, Papa Panov told him about his dream. Well, I hope Jesus comes. You have given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I think you deserve to have your dream come true. When he had gone, Papa Panov put on cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, looking up and down the street. Someone else was coming. A young woman walked so slowly and quietly, staying so close to the walls of shops and houses. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, Papa could see that it was a baby wrapped 
in a thin blanket. There was such sadness in her face and in the face of that little baby that Papa Ponoff was worried about them. Won't you both come in and warm up and have some rest? Oh, let me put on some milk to warm for the, for the baby. Oh, I had a baby once, and I know that babies need to have warm milk often in their belly. Oh, but his feet are so cold. He doesn't have any shoes. I can't afford shoes. I have no family to bring home money while I care for him. I'm on my way to the next village to find work. And just then, a thought flashed through Papa Ponov's mind. He remembered the little shoes he had looked at last night, but he had been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the little cold feet of the baby and made up his mind. Oh, please try these on. They're perfect shoes for your baby. Thank you. You have been so kind to us. I hope that all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Maybe he had missed his visitor. There were plenty of people around now, and they were all faces that he recognized. Hello, my neighbor. How are you? I'm well, thank you, my neighbor. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, Papa Panov. There were beggars. Happy Christmas, dear cobbler. Do you have any food to spare? Always. Papa Panov hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a slice of bread, hurrying back outside in case he missed the important stranger. Before he knew it, the winter darkness fell. Most people were home and indoors by now. No one was on the streets. He returned and sat down in his armchair. So, it had been just a dream after all. Jesus had not come. Then, all at once, he heard the tinkle of his doorbell. And he knew, he knew that he was no longer alone in the room. Did you see me, Papa Panov? I am here, Papa Panov. No, over here. Who are you? Where are you? Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream, the voice of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I was a part of every one of those you've helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still, only the sound of the big clock ticking. Great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, filling Papa Panov's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So Jesus did come after all. The end. So Papa Panov experienced the presence of the Holy in his acts of generosity. For as Jesus taught us, truly I tell you, just as you did to the least of these, you did it to me. For when we meet each other face to face, we meet the Holy One who is within us all. And when we help one another with love and respect, we honor the Holy within us all. Let us remember on this sacred night that this is the essence of our faith. Love is born again this night. Let it be born in us as well, so that we might know the blessings that come when we share our bounty with those in need. Our offering tonight will go to support 
the pastor's discretionary fund, which supports those in our community who need help in troubled times. We have opened our doors wide for 325 years and as a beacon of hope in the dark. With your help, we will continue to offer our hope and our help for years to come. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the ministry of First Parish. Will the ushers please come forward? And this reading is called, So For the Children Come, by Sophia Leon Foz. For so the children come, and so they have been coming, always the same way they come, born of the seed of man and woman. No angels herald their beginnings, no prophets predict their future courses, no wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Fathers and mothers sitting beside their children's cribs feel the glory, the sight of a new life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end, or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Now please join me in singing Joy to the World.
you join with me in a time of prayer? In the quiet of this holy night, let us take just a moment to listen to the sounds of all those around us, to hear the breathing of these living bodies with us, to hear the joy of young voices as they speak and giggle and laugh. And in the midst of this time of joy, let us make room to hold in our hearts all those who do not feel the joy that we feel. For many people, this is a difficult time of year. For those who are in the hospital, for those who are alone, especially for Al Jacobson, who is in the hospital this evening. We hold all of you in our hearts and hope that in some way that the joy that we feel might spread its way around this town, around this planet. For all who need our voices, may our voices be strong. For all who need our wealth, may our wealth be sufficient. For all who need our patience, may our patience be what it needs to be. For all those who struggle, may they find their way back to where they need to be. Holy One, fill this room with your life and your light that we might know the joy of this Christmas tide. Amen. And now let us be still in the darkness of our sacred space and listen to the quiet around us. For even in the quiet, there is the gentle being with others. Let us feel the warmth of community, knowing we are not alone, for in the quiet shadow is the glow of life within all. Let us know in the darkness the gift each candle brings a small flame, a diminutive light, 
and yet the wondrous gift to kindle another's glow. Let us be in awe at this moment as we each take up the flame and the light envelops this room and hope for peace and goodness fills the night, this beautiful, silent night. Will you take your candle and hold it high to give light into this world of ours? When the song of angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoners, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, and to make music in the heart. Amen.